This is a video I wanted to get out for a while, I just haven't had the time or made the time to film it. Um, I actually did film this in Utah, a walk around, and uh, the wind just canceled out everything I was saying. It was pretty much unlistenable, so couldn't use that video. I thought I'd just go ahead and do this in the garage. Granted, the lighting's not the best. I wanted to get it out there because I keep getting questions on uh, certain products on the Razor that I wanted to get linked in the description so you guys could go find it and uh, buy it if you guys like it. So, so a couple of things, the main things I keep getting questions on probably more than anything else is the cage. And the cage is awesome. It's a beautiful cage. It's made by Madigan Motorsports. Madigan Motorsports also made the bumper. Um, I want to say I think they call that their Mojave front bumper. Um, but check them out, man. They make absolutely just top quality stuff. Long travel kits, doors, cages, bumpers, um, you name it. It's, it seems like every time I look at their website, they're coming out with something different. But these guys are located in Southern California, pretty close to us. And uh, just absolutely top quality stuff. I cannot say enough good things about the experience I had with them, dealing with them in person, um, picking it up, lead times, uh, fit and finish and build quality was just top rate man it didn't it couldn't get any better so i was so happy i called them back and just told them just how pleased i was with everything that they did it was just turned out awesome so this is what they call their stock point uh cage meaning it us utilizes the stock doors and i did order it with the uh the rack the rack's an option i really like it just gave it kind of a baja feel and <clears throat> perfect spot for a spare tire to be up and out of the way i wasn't a big fan of putting the spare tire on the uh over the the trunk or the bed of the razor so um, keeps it up and out of the way and they're 32 inch tires they fit with plenty of clearance as you can see um, plenty more room for tools and boxes and other stuff you want to stick it up there also ordered it with the LED wing on the back just a really nice finishing touch um, looks sick the it's got an amber in the middle and brake lights on either side and uh, ordered the cage in a matte metallic silver and the roof is in a satin black but check them out. It is one of the best looking cages in my opinion. I did a lot of research before I pulled the trigger on something this expensive and I would do it every single time again. I just couldn't say how, how pleased I am with the, the whole process. All of their products are just awesome. So Madigan Motorsports does that. Um, what else? We'll do the uh, front suspension, I guess. Uh, on the front suspension, since I do have 32 inch tires, I went with Super ATV's front uh, forward offset. So it's a one and a half inch forward offset, high clearance uh, trailing, or a, sorry, yeah, control arm kit. And nothing but good things to say about it, man. It wasn't very expensive, I wanna say. I, I, I think it was five or 600 bucks for everything complete um, with a uniball stud and uh, adjustable lower uh, control arms. Uh, it can you can adjust your your camber and your caster, but really top quality, super solid built. Nothing negative to say about them at all. Um, they've been rock solid, so uh, really uh, pleased with that. Uh, for the front tie rod, uh, we have Zollinger Racing Products. Um, I don't think it's gonna focus in this lighting, but Zollinger Racing Products Extra Duty Desert Series tie rods um, is I think what they're called and they are built rock solid. Um, really like Zollinger Racing products. Um, I have the upper and lower uh, high clearance uh, billet aluminum radius rods on the back too, which I'll show you in a second. But their stuff is super, super nice, super well priced. Um, and again, it's another company I'll probably just keep using in the future. For as many side-by-sides as I have or any other upgrades I, I do where they have a product that'll fit. So um, what else up front? Viper Elite uh, 4,500 pound winch made by Moto Alliance tucked up behind the bumper. That's not going to show in the dark, so I won't try to stick the camera back there. Um, but uh, it's a nice winch, man. It's got a wireless remote, and uh, I haven't had a chance to use it yet, but I'm looking forward to it. Um, on the bumper, I have a 10 inch rigid LED light bar. Let's see, moving on back to lighting at the top. KC, I think it's called the Gravity Light Bar. Um, another really just high quality, I mean these things are expensive, these light bars, everybody knows light bars from brand name companies are super expensive. But I had the $100 Amazon 30,000 lumen supposedly light bar on the car before and it doesn't even compare. It's not even in the same ballpark. 
uh, the light quality, aside from how bright they are, the quality of light, it not it's not in the same universe. So when you go to a brand name light bar, even though you know this is like a thousand dollar light bar, it is insanely bright and crystal clear. So again, something I'll do in the future, I'll just stick with the brand name light bars because it, it put the other one to shame for sure. Tusk half windshield um, comes in handy for you know cooler weather, um, some light rain. We used it a little bit in Colorado last year and it just flips and folds up and connects to the cage obviously. Got one little screw down spot here in the middle and I uh, just had to drill an extra set of holes for it to fit this cage because um, it was for a stock cage but pretty much the same fit, not drastically different. Uh, but yeah, I haven't used it a lot, but I like having it. It's definitely a nice option to have on the car just in case um, you encounter some weather or some other situation where you'd like to keep something out of your face. Assault Industries, can't remember the name of these mirrors. Uh, they were wicked expensive, um, but I wanted a folding set of mirrors. I wanted something silver and black and something that looked like quality to go with everything else, especially since it was attached to the cage. And I like them a lot. I mean, I want to say they were like 300 bucks. Would I buy them again? Not sure. Might look into some half-priced options. Um, but they're nice, man. They're for sure nice mirrors. No complaints about them. And I also went with their quick-release D-shaped steering wheel. I am 6'5". Any bit of extra clearance I can get above my knees, I will take. So I did their D-shaped wheel. Really high quality, man. This thing is really, really nice. Super, super happy with it. And again, I did their the quick-release attachment. So... I haven't used it a lot, but sometimes when we park it at night in Glamis, if it's a super busy camp area, I'll pop the steering wheel off even though I lock the car up and just take the, the steering wheel inside and keep it in the trailer for the night. Uh, yeah, Dragonfire Racing pass-throughs for the stock seats. I know the seats get a lot of grief from a lot of people saying they're not comfortable seats. I really don't see what the big deal is. Um, again, I'm a big dude, 6'5", 205 pounds. The seats are comfortable. I mean, they're fine. I have no no problems with the seats at all. Um, and they're also really lightweight, which is nice. I mean, we talk about doing a seat upgrade, but and I know big bucket seats are more comfortable, but I just don't have a big gripe on the stock seats. I, I dig them just fine. So I think they're going to be in the car a while longer. We'd like to go to a bench seat in the back, and that's just for the dog. I built a dog platform for the back of the car before, and it was just a pain in the ass to take the seats out and put that platform in for uh, for the lab that we have to sit back there. So it would be nice to go to a bench seat, um, which would be nice for the dog. That's really the only reason. Uh, we want to be able to have the dog on some of the slower rides we do when we're just kind of cruising around camp or when we're out of state and uh, we go for a long ride. It's nice to take her. She likes it too. Uh, Dragonfire Racing lower door halves. Again, just did a lot of research on lower door halves. I like theirs the best just because I like the lines on them, really. Um, they were pretty simple. They followed the lines of the stock doors really well. And I liked a couple of the features they had on the inside of the doors where they rolled the edges and they kind of gusseted it for strength. I mean, it just feels really stout. It doesn't feel flimsy at all, even though it's super you know, lightweight. It doesn't feel like you're just going to bend the thing. And they've been on the car for a while now with no problems whatsoever. But I really like their door slam latch kit. These little guys that just plug into where a stock um, push push pin was. That's what it is. You just replace it with that little bumper, and basically, let's see, the bottom of the door makes contact with that just at the last second before the door will latch. So it's putting tension on the bottom, so that when it does latch. There is absolutely no play whatsoever in the doors. They don't rattle, they make zero noise. So I like that tension a lot. Um, so that was really cool. I read some bad reviews about like the install and fitment and stuff from other people online. No issues whatsoever. I think with anything, if you take your time, which I did, and you want it to turn out good and you don't rush it, it'll turn out good and the doors turned out just fine. No complaints, I'd do it again. On the inside of the doors, rig gear. Um, door bags. There's a lot of different door bags out there. I think I got these from Rocky Mountain, if I remember correctly. Um, knee pads, lifesaver. That's the best part of the door bags. Again, my knees are up in this area and was hitting the door all the time. So now it's just firmly pressed into that and it's comfortable. Um, they offer a lot of storage, which gave us place to put GoPros and batteries and dog leashes and phones and snacks and 
everything else. So we've got those on all four doors, front and back. So there's a ton of storage inside the car now. So that's cool. Moving on, just a GoPro mount. Uh, a lot of people have seen the GoPro mount and wondered what it was or where I got it. If you don't know about RAM mounts, um, RAM mounts, they, they make mounts for, for everything. Um, gosh, these things are awesome, man. I highly suggest just check out RAM mounts. They have like a never ending supply of mounts for everything you could think of. Um, but they're kind of expensive, but they last forever and they work really well. So check them out, RAM mounts, um, Amazon. Trying not to forget anything here. We did the front, we talked about the windshield, we talked about the winch. Um, GPS. The GPS is a Lowrance HDS7 Gen 3 touchscreen. And uh, the GPS is awesome. Um, I wanted something really nice, uh, something where I didn't have to rely on Wi Fi or cell service. And uh, I'll fire this up and just kind of show you guys a little bit on that reel. So I'll let it warm up and then I'll just kind of show you some of the cool things you can do with it. So I've got it loaded now and uh, see if I can do this one handed. This is Glamis right here and you can make all these custom maps with uh, Google Earth. So even though I know Glamis really well, we go there a lot, it was a way to experiment and try this out. Um, all those black lines you see are runs from or uh, drives that we took in the Razor from previous trips. Uh, and I've marked uh, places we want to go, like uh, China Walls up here, um, Olds is right there. And then all of these little dots are the washes. So as we get closer, I have all the washes marked so that way if uh, somebody calls and says we got another group and what wash they're in. I don't have to uh, drive around looking for the wash numbers. I can just look at the GPS and we can go straight there. So, um, Competition Hill, Osborne. So, um, really cool GPS. Uh, I like it a lot actually. I didn't want to rely on cell service when we went to places. So, um, it's been a good unit. Need to learn a lot more about it. Uh, it's basically a, a computer. So. Uh, it's pretty sophisticated and I've just been using it for pretty basic stuff. But uh, yeah, check it out. With the, I think they call it the Baja Spot GPS uh, antenna. It was white plastic. I just sprayed this with some non-metallic, did some research that if you could paint these antennas and if it would hurt anything. Um, I didn't want to run it up onto the roof because I was done wiring things through the cage. To be honest with you, I just wasn't feeling like it. So I just painted that with some non-metallic spray paint, flat black, and obviously it blends really well. Nobody really notices it at all until I point it out. Um, the other biggest question I get lately is the exhaust, and the exhaust, can't recommend it enough. Buy it. Uh, they had a uh, small video online that I found, that's how I discovered it, a little sound clip, and it sounded good. I thought it sounded good, went ahead and bought it, started up in the garage made me laugh man it caught me so off guard it sounds unlike any other exhaust I've heard it is getting compliments everywhere everybody wants to know who makes it and who the company is it's agency power agency power I did uh, two things from them and I got it all from one one place um, vividracing.com sells agency power exhaust blow-off valves other agency power parts uh, but check them out man don't think twice about buying it because it is a sick exhaust I bought it in conjunction with the where are we the adjustable blow-off valve which a lot of people keep commenting on how good it sounds um, there's a lot of blow-off valves on the market but it just sounds better can't explain it buy it you don't even think twice it will you will be happy with that I guarantee it so I did the agency power blow-off and exhaust in conjunction with vivid racing's tune for the car and that was new for this trip uh, that we just did in Utah it was the first time I drove it with their tune so vivid racing has their own tune um, they sell other tuning products. I went ahead and bought theirs based off the description. When you read uh, what theirs does or how they set it up in, in comparison to the other products they sell, you'll see why I chose it, man. And it, if you have it tuned your car, it's another thing, do it. Um, it makes a huge difference um, in throttle response and turbo spool up time. Um, it's just, I mean, it's like, it's a no brainer. Just, just, just one of those things you need to buy. So. Exhaust, blow-off valve, VR tune package, I would just 
go for that. It, it is awesome. You'll love it. So we've got that set up. Um, I did the Evolution Power Sports uh, charge tube and the V intake tube or whatever they call it. I did those because um, I didn't trust the stock seal on the plastic stuff. I've seen small sand bypass some of those uh, seal points and uh, drove me nuts. So I liked that Evo had their full silicone one piece tubes. I think if you can keep things one piece instead of multiple piece, it just flows out much better in my opinion. So um, I read the description on their stuff, sounded right, it fit, the tolerances, everything was perfect. And I just checked after uh, 10 days of hard riding, there was zero, zero debris that bypassed where this clamp is, obviously. So everything just went through the filter and before I had seen stuff get past there and I couldn't stand it. So that was another no brainer just for long term longevity on the car that just seemed like it needed to happen. So fire extinguisher mounted to the back of the cage just something on Amazon I liked that it was black it was kind of expensive <laughs> but it matched the whole car theme and that's well that's just important here is ZRP's high clearance billet radius rod set um, billet aluminum really high quality stuff again man super stout I'll do this every time um, if I do a long travel kit I just saw they make a plus four set so um, I will be purchasing these again in the future, I'm sure. Matched up uh, in the back, I've got Summer Brothers Gladiator, Gladiator XP Turbo Axles, 300M axles. So I snapped both the OEM ones and Glamis and uh, just thought I'd go with uh, the best I could find. It was this or RCV, and I, I just like the Summer Brothers product. So zero issues with Summer Brothers axles. Um, what else have I done? Lone Star billet um, sway bar links just again small upgrade liked the idea of it liked the look of it so I went with that wheels and tires at least for the dirt setup we've got method 401 beadlocks in black with 32 inch chicane RX uh, made by STI um, these have been fantastic wheel and tire setup a little heavy if I had to do it again I'd keep 32s I would just go with something a little bit lighter weight Traction's been awesome. Everything we've done, these tires have been fantastic. They're looks like they have a long wear life too. They're just heavy. Um, probably do something just a little bit lighter for spin up time, man. When we're drag racing and stuff, I feel like these are holding me back a little bit. Um, I'll see if I can get the camera to focus underneath the car because I did do a skid plate. Did we do that? Oh, uh, yeah. So that is a Tusk. I think it's called the U U M H W. I think. Skid plate, I can't remember all the letters on that, <laughs> but it was a really nice skid plate kit. It fit, the fit and finish was perfect. It came with some heavy duty um, steel, um, basically frame sliders, rock guards that kind of run the whole length of the, the car and just uh, definitely feel like if I slid this thing off some rocks and a couple times I did this past trip in Moab, it protects stuff. So if I have one complaint, um, it's all those holes were not in there when I bought it. Um, it had zero holes for drainage or ventilation. It seemed like the car was running a little bit hotter. Um, I probably had 25 pounds of sand and rocks up in there. So I dropped the skid plate and uh, used a two and an eighth inch hole saw and just drilled out all those holes, kind of made a pattern to line up with both the floor mounts for drainage and just along the cooling lines for the radiator and stuff. Um, because again, it seemed like the fan was kicking on more. It just seemed like it was kind of had, you know, no ventilation, no air in there. So I would say Tusk, if you haven't updated this, drill some holes for, for ventilation and drainage. It just seems like you would do that, but you didn't. Otherwise, again, I like it. I like it a lot. That's pretty much it um, for the walk around. If you guys have any questions on anything I didn't, I didn't cover, or if you see something that I didn't go over, let me know. I think I, I think I pretty much got everything in there. Um, since I'm wrapping it up, I'm just going to go ahead and, and fire the car up for you. I'm going to try to put the camera over in a spot where maybe you can get a better sense for the exhaust. I'll let it warm up, give it a couple of revs so you can hear the blow off again, and I'll show you the lights. Um, mainly on the wing so you can see what that looks like if you haven't seen it in any of the videos. And uh, I'll turn on the KCs too, but just do a quick walk around with it, uh, with it running and give it a couple of revs. And uh, again, every, everything will be linked in the description, so if you guys have any questions, just let me know. Thank you for watching. Appreciate it.